All right, guys, I am, uh, I'm Pastor Josh. I'm telling you that in case you didn't recognize me, because the reality is that my phone doesn't recognize me. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I lifted up my phone, and my phone was like, I've never seen that person before in my life. Type a passcode in, sucker. And so, um, so this is different. One of my kids, one of my kids saw me shaving this afternoon, and uh, he came in, and he was like, uh... He called all of his brothers. He's like, hey, come look at something weird happening to dad's face. Uh, so this isn't, this isn't how I normally look. Next week, I'll be uh, Grizzly Adams coming at you. So, um, but tonight, we're doing something. It's called Family Reunion. Uh, it's where we make you dress up as a weird family member um, to have some fun, to drive a point home. Uh, school just started today. How many of you enjoyed that? 5 a.m. wake ups, riding the bus. Yeah, school lunch, the good stuff, right? The good stuff. Hey, how many of you, though, how many of you though genuinely, you got, to, you got to see some people you haven't seen, you had a good moment, like back to school today? Anybody? Anybody got it? Okay. All right. Those were the extroverts. All right. Hey, but the reason that we do family is because we want to emphasize family in this place. But how many of you... How many of you know that sometimes family, uh, well, family in particular, family is a word that I feel like gets stolen a lot. You, you ever see that there's words, there's words that get stolen, like they used to mean one thing and they don't mean that anymore. Like um, family is a beautiful concept, it's an important concept, um, but when I think of family, often now it has been stolen. My first thought is usually fast and furious memes, Okay. Um, so when I think of family, I think of Dom, right? Um, like everything. You don't even have to like Fast and Furious, um, but you can love making fun of Fast and Furious. Anybody? Anybody there? Okay. I just love, um, can we show another one? This is for like this, the, uh, for all of you like anime peoples. Um, family is more powerful than everything. How many of you like SpongeBob? Uh, F is for friends who do stuff together. No, F is for family. Okay, uh, I'm going to be honest. I never even watched Spongebob. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, that gets a reaction? Shut up. Okay. So here's the deal. Sorry, man. I, that was harsh. You were like, I'm not ready. He's not allowed to tell me to shut up. But here's the deal. I think that family, family is a word that gets stolen. It gets used by every, every organization ever. Like um, when you start a job. And you get a job, you're going to hear people at, at your work going, hey, man, we're a family, right? This is our public family. And we're fa we do everything. We push grocery carts together. We make subs together. We're family, right? Like you have, you have your, your baseball team that, that, um, that in the whole season, you're like, we're family. This is our baseball family. You've got like your math club after school that's like, we're family. Seven times nine family right like family it, it's taken up by um by every group how many of you have ever called somebody that is not your family family right okay how many of you walked up to somebody who is not your brother and said what's up bro how many of you have ever said what's up fam how many of you i don't know i feel like sister is a little weirder right like i don't go up to people and be like hey sister but uh anybody anybody uh okay yeah 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 all right <laughs> Do you know what you don't do? You don't walk up to people and be like, hey, mom. <laughs> and you definitely don't walk up to people. <laughs> hey, daddy. <laughs> that, you don't do that. No, no. No, I don't want to give y'all nightmares, all right? So, hey, so. So can we be honest? Can we be honest that family, family, I think, family, I think is a word, um, it's a word that gets used by everybody, and, and it's, it's a word that um, we, we use pretty casually sometimes. Um, but, the, but the Bible is pretty clear that Christians are a kind of family. In fact, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to blast you real quick. If you're taking notes, just write down like where this is at. First Peter 5. Verse 9, he says, remember that your family of believers, say family, 
family of believers all over the world are going through the same exact things you are. First Peter 2 said, he, 2, 7, he says, love the, say it, family of believers, right? He says in Hebrews 2, 11, the Bible says, we all have the same father. If we've got the same dad, we're part of the same what? That's right. Hebrews 2, 11, we have the same father. First Thessalonians 4, 10, you do love all of God, say it. Galatians 6.10, do good to all people, especially the who? Family of believers. Over and over and over and over and over again, the Bible says, hey, Christians are a family. Christians belong to a family together. And, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is incredible because the family of believers is strongly stronger than your family uh, football team. It's stronger than your family workplace. It's strongly, str oh my gosh, stronger than your neighborhood family. It's stronger than um, the, the friends that you had in middle school that you were like, we're family. And then you all went to different high schools and you haven't talked to them. Now, some of you still do. Some of you, yeah. Some of you just got out of middle school, too, so it's a little different. <laughs> Your elementary school family, right? <laughs> you remember when we were in Ms. M Michelle's class together? Family for life, right? Like, no, no, no. The Bible, the Bible is clear that Christians are a kind of family together that is different. That is, um, uh, that is something incredibly powerful. It's incredibly, incredibly strong. And I wanted to share with you one point of that tonight. I'm going to be brief. I don't have, um, well, that, that's not true. I have a long sermon. I'm going to keep the long sermon short, okay? I promise. But here's the deal. There's, I, I wanted to preach, preach heavy one verse tonight to you. And it's found in Matthew chapter 5. And it's, um, if you know what Matthew chapter 5 is, it's Jesus' most famous, most public sermon ever, okay? It's called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus went up on a mountain, and it said he started to preach. There were thousands of people who listened to this, okay? It was a big deal. I mean, uh, this is Jesus' most famous sermon. Um, and, uh, I, I mean, this is like... Um, like if I, say, if I say I have a dream, every single one of you know what that is, right? Um, because you're like, that's a famous speech. This is um, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is, is most, more famous. I mean, this is a huge. It's been known throughout history. And, and so this is huge. It's emphatic. It's important. Matthew 5, Jesus starts to list people that are blessed by God. Let me just ask you a question. You don't even have to know what the word blessed is. How many of you want to be blessed? Right? Like, I mean, just like, that feels like easy, right? Um, the opposite of that would be cursed. How many of you want to be cursed, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. DJ would say yes. All right, so. Uh, no, no, we, we're like, yeah, I want blessing, right? Like, I want to do good. I want to have good life. I want to be, I want to be blessed. Matthew 5, verse 9. It's in the middle of all of these blessed. And he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. That's it. That's the verse I want to talk to you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Who are the ones that are called the children of God? It's the peacemakers. Who are the ones that the world will know and say, that's God's family? Those people belong to God. Who are those people? It's the people who make peace. It's the peacemakers. And so I, I've got one thing, if you're taking notes, write down, family fights for peace. And I know that's ironic because families fight for everything, right? I've got four kids at home. Um, I've got three in fighting ages, right? Um, what that means is I have one baby who's three months old that no one would dare touch her or they'll die, okay? Um, so I got this cute little baby girl. Nobody touches her, right? She's a baby. Um, but the other three children... They fight, right? Right? They fight for everything. 
They fight over Legos. They fight over uh, what cup they're going to use at the table. They fight over what seat they're going to be at at the table. They fight over which, uh, who gets to control the iPad. They fight over, um, I think they fought, uh, I think they, what, they fought over something ridiculous today. Um, oh, man, I'm looking at my wife. She, she doesn't remember either. Uh, there was something even, like, y'all, y- y'all get it, though. Y'all ever had a fight in your family that you're like, that's really petty, but, like, if you touch my spoon one more time, all right? Like, um, right, like, like, you recognize that families fight over stuff. And, I, and I'm talking about, um, you know, I say that, I say that in a silly way. I'm talking, in, um, you know, I say families fight. I'm talking about, like, my, my little boys are arguing about, who, who gets to wear the Superman cape. But, um, but the reality is, too, that sometimes families fight over other things. Um, sometimes families fight and, um, and they don't talk anymore. Sometimes, sometimes families fight and, um, and the, the relationship doesn't heal. Sometimes families fight and um, you're left wounded for a really long time. Sometimes families fight and uh, it's not okay. And I want to challenge you tonight that the family that belongs to God is a family of people who fight for peace. Did you know that there's a difference between peacemakers and peacekeepers? Or peaceful people? Right? There's people, there's people who don't start stuff. There's people who don't, um, maybe you're quiet, maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you don't say much, you know, you don't, you, you don't, you don't put yourself out there. Um, you're the kid, somebody bumps you in the hallway, you're going to apologize to them, right? I'm so sorry for existing. I'm so sorry. I, didn't, I shouldn't have even been in this hallway. This isn't even, I'm on, the, I'm on B block. I should have been on, I'm so sorry, right? Like, there's some people who, um, who like, they, they're not going to, they're not going to raise anything. I had this, I had this moment uh, at Publix where, um, Somebody, I was like putting my groceries on the little conveyor belt, and somebody came while my basket is full and put the divider down and dumped their groceries so that I couldn't put any more of my groceries on. And I was like, that's a weird move. Who does this? Like, what are you trying to start? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen like the public fight scene. I don't know what that looks like, but I was like, what is this? What kind of move? Is this now that here's the crazy part the cashier was like I wish afterwards the cashier was like I wish you would have hit him and I was like I don't I, I'm not the person I'm not the person I, I don't know if you know this I've never been in a in a real fight in my life the only the only fight I've ever been in was in youth group in J box when a kid got mad at me for cheering on my team in a game and he tried to fight me that's as close as I get y'all I'm likable, okay? Uh, right, but that's not being a peacemaker. Oftentimes, that's just avoiding problems. See, there are other people who are just peacekeepers, um, and they don't really have to take any effort. They just hold the line. They don't have to say anything. They don't have to do anything different. They just... Um, they, they, they just, uh, they just show up, um, to keep the peace, but a peacemaker is somebody who fights for peace. And I know that sounds ironic, but did you recognize that peace isn't always easy or natural? You ever had somebody not like you and you don't have no good reason why they don't? You ever looked across the room at somebody and you're like, I think they gave me a dirty look. And I did nothing before this. See, see, you don't have to look for conflict. Conflict will find you. Am I right? Say I'm right. Right? Hey, you don't have to look for conflict. Listen, I know it was, I know it was, I know it was silly. Um, I'm going to pick on you all a little bit. Right? We just played basketball out there when I called game time immediately it was like, we won. No, we won. No, you're messed up. If we had played one more minute, we would have won. It was, my, it was our ball. We would have won, right? Like, just like a little bit. And I know y'all are like, you're feeling it right now. It's okay. 
Here's the deal. You don't have to look for conflict. Conflict will find you. You can either hold it or be a peacemaker. But the people of God are people who seek out peace. They're people who push for peace. The people of God are people who make peace. And here's, here's why that's important. Because I've been in, I, y all, if y'all don't know this, I grew up in this church. This is my church. This is my turf. I run this city. Right, right, right. No, man, I grew up in this church. I hope you have a, sa a similar story that you get to grow up in a family. Now, here's the deal. I've watched people in my family of church who when conflict comes up, they run. Who when somebody says something in a tag group that they don't like, they're like, you know what, peace out, I'm done. I don't need these people. Who, um, who when, uh, when, when, when they get into a fight, they say, nah, I'm not coming back. And I need you to understand, because in Vox, we talk about we are family. It's one of our values. I need you to understand we are family family. I don't say that the way that everybody else says that. Everybody else says that and um and they can they can leave at some point. There have been people who promised I, I I bet you right now there have been people in your life who promised you that they would be family and are not. I bet you there are people in your world who said that they would be family to you and they are not. And I need you to understand that you belong to the family of God. I need you to understand that regardless of what everyone else does with the word family, that you belong to the family of God. That you have a family where you belong. And I want you to understand that the family of God is going to make peace. And fight to continue to be part of the family. Do not, listen to me, do not give up on the family of believers. Do not give up on the family of God. Do not give up on God's children. I have, I have friends who went to youth group with me who at some point got angry with the people of God and are no longer part of the family of God. And I say this tonight as a calling, both as a blessing to you to say you belong to something and a warning to say don't forget that you belong to something. The children of God, family fight for peace. When it comes to Vox, I want us to be a place where we really push the boundaries of this. Like, um, like I get it. In high school, you're walking around, you see people, um, there's going to be people that, that you're not going to know everybody. You're not going to be close with everybody. Um, it's weird to me now. I had a big, my freshman class, at Ida Baker was 1,300 students. We have 1,300 freshmen at Ida Baker, okay? Um, can I be honest? There's freshmen that I, there's people who are in that class that I run into um, that I do not remember. You ever had that awkward moment? Somebody goes, hey, what's up? How you doing? And you're like, what's up? Man, spell your first and last name for me. Just, I, I'm having a hard time spelling it. I remember you, but just spell it for me. Right? Like, just like, like if you've ever forgotten who these people are, listen, you're not going to know everybody, but I'm telling you, the family of believers, they fight for peace. They make peace. They fight to be a family. And I, I, I just want Vox, I want to call you to something. I want to invite you um, to be a family to the people around you. I, I want to invite you to be available to the people around you. I want to invite you to, to care for the people around you. I want to invite you to challenge the people around you, to expect greater things from them. I want to challenge you to know the people around you, not just like the one person you're comfortable with. Sorry. I, I want to challenge you to, to, to get outside of maybe your comfort a little bit because look around you. 
These people are your family. If you belong to God, you belong to a family, the children of God. And so something even super simple tonight, I'm just going to encourage you. We're going we're gonna to go back into partying a little bit. We're going to have photo booth, all the things, whatever. But I want to challenge you tonight, just take a step in that. Talk to somebody that you don't know really well in this room. <sighs> like go out of your way to make peace. Go out of your way to start something, not a fight. The only hands that will be thrown are for hugs, okay? No, no, no. I want to challenge you to stretch yourself, to be part of the family of God. Because I want to share something with you. The Bible says that there was a point that you and I were enemies of God. There was a point in your life where every single one of us was an enemy of God. And the Bible says that while you were still an enemy of God, Christ adopted you into his family. Can you imagine, can you imagine somebody who hates you? Like you imagine somebody who talks bad about you all the time, who hates you, who doesn't like you, who, who then you reach out to constantly over and over and over and over and say, I want you in my family. I want to love you. I want to care for you. I'm going to take care for you. I'm going to spend my money on you. Right. How, how many of you, how many of you, you don't even spend money on your friends? <laughs> Right? How many of you, when a sibling comes in and they're like, hey, can I borrow 20 bucks? You're like, go get a job. <laughs> All right. Now, now, how many of you can imagine the person that you hate saying, listen, I'm going to take care of everything for you? Can you imagine how crazy that sounds? And the Bible says that while you were an enemy of God, Jesus loved you enough to adopt you into his family. And he invited you in, and he called you a child of God. And so we get to respond by loving on people, by being peacemakers, by being the family. Let me pray for you. Vox, would you do something? Would you stand up? Could we do something even more wild? Would you just put, put an arm on the person next to you? If they, if they smell bad, just do like the hand on the shoulder, no open pits. You know, you just keep it classy. If you're scared of monkey pox, just do like a air thing. You know, you don't even have to touch them. All right. Hey, let me pray for us. Father God, you tell us to, to call you uh, Father. In fact, when you, taught, when you taught people how to pray, you said, make sure that, that we would call you Father. Like it's in the, in the very way that we approach you, that we're, we're supposed to remember that we belong to your family. And so, Father God, I pray that that is something that, that gets burned in, maybe, maybe like a spiritual family tattoo that we all share. This idea that we belong to your family. This idea that we don't just belong to you, but we actually belong to each other. Father God, I pray that as we um, begin a brand new school year, that you would begin something tonight in this place. As silly as tonight is, God, I pray that you would do something in us that begins to draw us together as the family of God, that we would be called children of God, people who make peace everywhere that we go. Father, we use the word family to mean all kinds of things. But Father God, I pray that we would learn what true family is among the people of God. I pray that you refine that message. God, I pray that you stir that up in us. Help us to love one another. In Jesus' name, would you say amen? Amen. Hey, we got some announcements for you guys. Let's go.